Um, I'm Alex Kitson from Simon Fraser University. Before we dive into the strange and fascinating world of lucid dreaming, I'd like to highlight a bit of what you can expect from this talk. One is, what is lucid dreaming? How is it used for introspection? And how can we use lucid dreaming for designing introspective experiences in virtual reality? So are you dreaming? I know it's the last day of the conference, so maybe some of you are. <laughs> um, but you might recognize this um, from the movie Inception. And in this movie, the main character has a token, this token, that he uses um, when he's in the dream, he spins it. And if it falls, he's not dreaming. If it keeps going, he's in the dream. So I'd like you to, uh, with me, do this little demo for reality checking. Without looking, can you think of how many fingers do you have on your hand? I have ten. Okay, now bring them out. Have a look at them. Do you still have the same number of fingers you thought you did? If not, then you might want to ask yourself if you're dreaming. So lucid dreamers use this as a way to check if they're dreaming or not. And lucid dreaming is defined as when the dreamer is in the dream, they realize they're dreaming. And once you realize you're dreaming in a dream, you can start to control it and manipulate it to whatever you imagine. So you can imagine, if you're controlling and manipulating things in the dream, you can start flying, you can eat a whole pizza, and there's no repercussions. <laughs> it's, it's only really limited to whatever you can imagine and beyond. Doesn't this sound like the ultimate virtual reality? Well, I think so. And I think we can draw a lot of parallels between lucid dreaming and virtual reality. The first one is that, theoretically, you could experience anything. So in VR and lucid dreaming, you could go flying, you could go to fantastical worlds. You're also immersed, and I mean sensorily immersed, um, so everything feels like you're in a different space, yet you are aware of that it's not actually real. And that's the same with lucid dreams. Even though everything feels as if it's real, you know that you're actually in a dream. There can be real impact on behavior and thinking in the real world. So if you're simulating something in a virtual reality or in lucid dreaming, those effects can carry forward into your waking life. You can also experience things through a different perspective or a different lens. You can step outside your normal self of what you're seeing and experiencing right now and see something different. And what I get into this talk more is we can also start to introspect and explore our own consciousness. So how can we design for an effective VR experience that can support introspection? There are many things people can do in lucid dreams, but one that I'd like to focus on is introspection, which I define as the examination or observation of one's own mental and emotional processes. Introspection can provide privileged access to our own mental states, including sensory, bodily, cognitive, and emotional, uh, that are not mediated by other sources of knowledge, so that one's experience of the mind is unique. And this can be beneficial in the clinical and general sense. Moreover, introspection can increase the quality and quantity of information we have about ourselves and breaks down the barrier of our own egos that affects how we process information about ourselves. There are a number of techn technological movements that are looking into positive human functioning and well-being. And this is not an exhaustive list, but you, as you can see, there are a lot of different areas of research looking at supporting well-being.
However, none have really looked at more spiritual experiences, human experiences, and definitely none have looked at lucid dreaming. So the goal for my research is to understand how lucid dreams can be used as a tool or a lens to looking at how we can examine our own thoughts and emotions and then applying those same concepts to virtual reality. And from this knowledge we gain through understanding lucid dreamers and how they introspect, we might be able to apply that in VR. I used a phenomenological uh, approach, and this is, I'll get into that a bit more, um, but to find my participants, my lucid dreamers, Stephen Leberge, who is one of the founders of Lucid Dreaming Research, suggests that you have to verify informants understand the concept of lucid dreaming that include like a recognition phrase in a sample lucid dream report. And they should also be highly trained and skillful and accurate observers of their own experiences. Because we can't directly observe dreams yet, um, it's really hard to study dreams, especially lucid dreams. So when I put out the call to participants, I had them send me a, a sample of a, their lucid dreams, as well as how long have they been lucid dreaming and how frequently are they lucid dreaming currently. And I ended up finding nine participants from across the world. And their ages were from 19 to 57, so quite a range. And they had 20 years of experience of lucid dreams on average. Um, the majority had around 10 years, and one even had over 40 years of lucid dreaming experience. I used broad, open-ended questions and a semi-structured interview that lasted about 30 to 60 minutes. Um, my process, I used uh, Creswell's qualitative inquiry for phenomenology, but this is essentially a synthesis of others' work in psychological phenomenology. Uh, first is transcribing the data, so taking all of their interviews. Then I looked at their significant statements or quotes. Then I took those quotes and put them together into clusters of meaning or themes. And from those I developed a textual and structural description of what it's like to introspect during lucid dreams. And after reflecting on that and seeing if I had any potential biases in these, I developed uh, the essential or invariant structure, which is a, a statement on what it is like to introspect in lucid dreams. And I'd like to share you this uh, significant quote so you can see a bit of what participants describe as an introspective experience in a lucid dream. So, for a bit of context, this lucid dreamer was speaking about an interaction with uh, one of somebody they look up to, Nicole Kidman. <coughs> I asked her what she felt bad about. She said inferiority. I said, what would make you feel inferior? She said other people. I asked her if she didn't feel inferior when she was alone. She kind of fell over sad and didn't answer. The whole thing made me sad, especially because why would this person, who's a movie star, feel bad or inferior to other people? I felt like crying a few times, so I guess this was somebody who I think is really great, but at the same time they feel inferior. And I think it's like the part of me that feels like it struggles between facing really good and feeling really bad about myself. So we can see that this participant, through interacting with a, a dream character that they conjured up, they're able to ask this dream character questions, which is essentially just their own self, and, and getting back these answers about how they're feeling about themselves. 
From these significant statements, I develop four themes. The first is sensations and feelings, so these are bodily experiences prevalent in lucid dreams relating to introspection. Um, these senses seem to map closely to what they experienced in normal life, such as touch, smell, taste, sound, vision, a sense of space. So all of the senses that you have now, you can also experience in dreams. The next theme was actions and practices. So these were about exploring, creating, playing, problem solving, and interacting with dream objects and characters. Influences on experience. So lucid dreaming and the practices surrounded have uh, commonalities with each other, such as meditation, and those seem to influence what they are doing in lucid dreaming. And then there was meaning making. So though lucid dreams cannot reach the deepest and most secret parts of being, they can still bring about authentic experiences and meaning to those people. It was the case for all participants that they experienced some sort of introspective experience, a shift or change in perception, a connection with their self or others, or self-growth through lucid dreaming. And so, what I would describe as introspection and lucid dreaming is there is a lot of vividity and, and clarity. So, so what, what I'm seeing right here with all of you in the audience, I'm looking at my hands, I can see the lines, the, my veins in my hand, the same clarity is in lucid dreams. It's free of judgment and repercussions. So you can do whatever you want and nobody's going to know. Nobody can find out. No one has access to your own mind. It's a chance to dig deep into the mind. You can ask the really important questions and see what happens, and give your own interpretations to that. And it's a connection, a lens, and a way of communicating with the self. Okay, so that probably sounded a little different from what we've heard today. <laughs> So how does this apply to technology, to VR? Uh, here are some design implications um, that I found might be helpful in thinking about designing for VR and introspective experiences. And the first is using vivid visuals and other senses, those can add to the experiences. Just like in lucid dreams, um, VR can also have a focus and it can feel real in parts. However, participants said if there were some discrepancies, um, like some things didn't make sense or were weird or uh, other senses weren't quite there, that was okay. And exploration and open environments were important. There's a feeling of possibility, there's a playful and childlike nature, things are fantastical. Um, People seem to like this in lucid dreams, and I think in VR that's important if you're going to let people explore their own consciousness. Also giving users a sense of control, empowerment, and confidence. Um, so some lucid dreamers liked to practice things like, um, if they are a professional snowboarder, they would do tricks in VR, I mean in lucid dreams, so they could do something similar in VR as a way to practice. Also, giving space for personal meaning and interpretation. So something um, like this work, which is demoed downstairs, uh, it's, it's very simple, but it's also very elegant in the way that you can put your own interpretations into what's ha happening and what's going on. And also seamless transitions. So creating a very safe space and that's not just in the virtual environment, but also going into and out of it. And also this idea of ceremony. So this game that's coming out very soon is called Sky from that game company. And they use uh, lights as a way to introduce ceremony. And ceremony seemed to be really important in lucid dreams in that it created a space 
to like, okay, this is something different, I'm going to focus on this. Mm -hmm. And it's a way for them to open themselves up to be able to have introspective experiences. So from our research, we can see that genuine human experiences, like lucid dreams, can inform the design of maybe something that's unreal, like virtual reality. Our next steps is in validating these design guidelines and creating a virtual reality experience that supports introspection. It would be great if we could just use a brain reading device that spontaneously creates whatever we're thinking, but until now, we will have to be the architects of our own virtual reality experiences. Thank you.